watching me like a nigga is cable. I be on no label, but my clothes be all like. Is average, they masking talent with great production. But who I fuck with, they fucking love it. When rappers rapping like they happen to master assassins, way of attacking. Cause not many rappers can grasp it. The way I slash it on the beat and put that in the casket, this shit is drastic. I practice, Look, I happen to daily. Rap I'm rising it. up at 716 on the dot. This be that. Well, for your mind, we the cream of the crowd. We climbing rises. They tell Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another installment of a no label convo. Got another. Well, first, I want to thank everybody that's been tuning in, that's been listening yeah, on the podcast it, platforms, YouTube, sharing all that. Definitely appreciate y'all and keep doing that because we're doing it for y'all. Facts. But we definitely have another special guest here today, something we've been trying to line up for a while. Yeah, he's a, he's a busy man. <laughs> he's He's been working man, listen, hard. Listen. These, this is one of the people I, he's honestly one of the first rappers I knew of in Buffalo. Like, just from being a kid, and it's just, like, watching it evolve to what it is now. One of the most hardest-working dudes in the game, as far as I'm concerned. If you're from Buffalo, you need to know his name. It's my boy, Jay Skis. How you living, bro? Good, bro? I'm good, man. How y'all feeling? Living yeah, good. All right, man. It's a good, it's a beautiful one with this. My days is all fucked Wednesday, up. Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Beautiful yeah. Wednesday, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you've been running around, though. You in town. Got yeah, to get this bro. one in, man. It's been, it's been crazy. I've been, like I said, like, blessed, and I'm grateful for all the opportunities, man. But, you know, I'm glad I got to finally link up with y'all boys, Definitely. man. You know what I'm saying? So we could kind of chop it up. For sure, sure. For sure. Let's pick it up from the uh, from the beginning. Like like I said, I knew you since I, since I was young. Yeah, facts. And you went to school with my siblings, and I, mm -hmm. I've seen him, like, one of the first rappers I could identify was yeah. Jay Skis. Facts. It's like, has your name always been Jay Skis? Has it it was like, it was, yo, what's funny is in, uh, when I was younger, my first rap name was Vendetta on some like <laughs> wrestling <laughs> on shit. Some, on some Def Jam oh, Vendetta? Yeah. <laughs> some, <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> first one was Vendetta. What and, age was um, that? Man, I was probably 12. Shout out to Scoop and my man uh, Ron P. Them niggas, uh, we we had a little, not even a, a rap group. Like them niggas wanted to rap because they they uncles wanted to rap. Shout out to mm. Jay Villains. They had a studio over off of Delavan, and um, you know they wanted to rap. They had came out with a few records and shit like that. And being around them, cause I was like maybe 11, 10, 11, 12 years old. Okay. I think I was eleven actually. Yeah, when I first started hanging with Scoop, and you know what I'm saying that was like my best friend. I lived at fifty six Andover. He lived across the street at 65. Dope. You know what I'm saying? So literally across the street. Yeah. And I would be at his crib every single day. Like, I would just go over there and stay the night. We would just mm -hmm. listen to beats and shit and, you know, listen to them joints. And then he, oh, yeah, my uncle's rap. I'm going to be a rapper, da 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 And then I got my first nickname. We used to always play mm -hmm. the video game, and we would be rapping. And, oh, yeah, Vendetta. Yeah, Vendetta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then that, uh, that just turned into Jay Skeezy after a while. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Word. Just a play on play on my name. Pretty much. My yeah, my actual name. That's how that's what's what's, what's your first I I swear I don't know your first First name, name is Jared. Jared, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So when you said you started rapping at around eleven? Yeah, around like eleven, twelve years old, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when was I'm trying to think around what time that was. That's like what, early two thousands? Yeah, this was two thousand maybe two thousand one, two thousand two. Okay. So who was you listening to back then? Man, that got you my into fa what? My man. favorite rappers was Busta Rhymes, Jay Z. He just dropped a higher uh, project too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, he was just in the studio with uh with Monk and them. Oh, Monk, West Side. West Side. They nice. was just in the studio. Gotta get Monk in here too, man. That's a big <laughs> fact. That's a big <laughs> fact. But uh, yeah, like Busta Rhymes was one of my favorites. I used to always uh, you know how ninety three point seven they would play the shit. Mm -hmm. I would go and dub. You know, say so get the cassette <laughs> and dub his yep. songs, and then be trying to rap them back because he would rap so fast and mm -hmm. shit. Um, so definitely Busta Rhymes, like I said, Jay Z, um, Nas. Um, my first, my first like actual album that I purchased was uh, Shine. Hmm. The his, I think his, I think I think his was named Shine. It was Shine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the name of the album was Shine. That's with Bad Boy on it. And yeah, just before he got locked up. Yeah, right mm -hmm. before he got locked up. Yeah, and then um, the first album that was given to me because I think I bought that, and a month later I got um, the Dynasty. Nice. Jay Z. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So Classic those was like, too. you know, my first couple albums that yeah. I really tuned tuned into, and then after that was Nelly. 
Okay, yeah. So country Nelly grammar. Yeah. Yeah. People, people forget how hard Nelly was. Yo, Nelly, his first yeah. album was crazy. It was crazy. His first album was crazy. <laughs> crazy it's probably bro. like Diamond right now, bro. It is. It <laughs> it's yeah, for like sure. Diamond. It was Diamond back then. Mm -hmm. It was Diamond back then for sure. Yeah, Nelly was so like crazy. now, shit. Ain't no Hell telling. Yeah. All right, so you started rapping around like that 11, 12, like 01. Yeah. And people see you now and they see you in the studio with. <laughs> Conway, you in the studio with all these big names taking pictures. You had pictures with Pat Poost. And the reason I really wanted to tap in on that year was because there's 19 years in between then and now. It's like, very true. I've seen it with my own. Like, I grew yeah. up watching you rap. Facts. Facts. And it's clicking now. Yeah. And it's just like, we got a lot of young viewers. So I want to be sure to, like, yo, there was 19 years of work, work, grinding in the, right. like, in the dark. So you said, we was talking earlier, and you said you started rapping at 11. You got nice around, like, 14. You was around, like, 14? Yeah, it was around, like, 14, 15. That's when I started considering myself to be nice. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because around that time, like, my favorite rapper around that time was, like, Lloyd Banks. You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, I love 50 Fire Cent. Heavy. I love, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love 50 Cent. I love Yayo. Um, I love the game, you know what I'm saying? But Banks was the one that just always, like, stood out to me, you know what I'm saying? Because he was putting the, putting the metaphors and the similes together. Flow was crazy, you know what I'm saying? He, his verse on every song always stood out to me, you know what I mean? So I used to always try to emulate his flow and, and how he used to come. And the, the thing with me has always been, I always want to either put words in my verses that you've never heard before, or I want to bring a metaphor, a simile that you've never heard before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'll give you an example. When I hear rappers and they say bottles and models, mm -hmm. that that rhyme has been used a million times throughout hip hop. You feel Countless. what I'm saying? I'm trying to bring different, you know what I'm saying, different sounds and put different words together that niggas have just, have just never heard. Yeah. So even back then when I was 14, 15, and I'm considering myself nice and I'm, you know what I'm saying, every day working out, writing, penning every day. That that's always been the mission. So fifteen years ago, to this day, you know what I'm saying, that's always been the mission. Dope, dope. So when did you like, okay, you got nice around fourteen. When did you start when did you make your first project or when did you start releasing Whew. stuff? Um, solo or just like Solo. Solo. So my first solo project didn't come until I was um I want to say I was 20, because this was mm. 2009, 2010, 2010, so I was 21, and that was, um, that was whack, Women, Alcohol, Cash, and Kicks, <laughs> word, Come word. On. so yep. that was the first joint, That's dope. and that was around the height of, like, the Ocho days, yeah, I was just about to say, was that, it was that. like, wh which came first, was first class, it was first class, and then, mm -hmm. so okay. yeah, it was first class, um, first class was always, like, the music aspect of everything ocho was just that was just niggas used to get turned up. Right, yeah. you know what i'm saying like niggas would come through it used to be alcohol shit that's really what it was women alcohol cash and kicks like the second song on that project is called usual day it just pretty much embodies that period of time where we was all like 20 21 19 mm -hmm. And every day we would go to work and then come home and buy four locos and drink and yeah. it would be girls coming four through locos, and I'm yeah this, and this is when this is when they was like bad this is when they was bad you know what I'm saying we yo you drink one you would get sauce you drink two you gonna be out down for the night the the three I've only seen one person drink three and he was like hanging out the window and throwing up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bring back memories, man. Yeah, I was in I was in high school. My brother used to go chill with the old Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like, Damn, I kind of want to know what they doing over there. <laughs> yeah, bro, it, used, it used to be uh, crazy, young bro. Buck. It used yeah, to be was, crazy, bro. I was stealing for locals. Yeah, bro. But now, yeah, um, man. you know, that was that was the period of time we was living in, and um, you know, whack was just like I said, it was just overall just an embodiment of of that period of time, and and me at that time being an artist and still trying to figure out what I wanted to do in terms of music, like how I could get my message across. But at the same time, I'm just trying to prove to niggas that I'm nice. Where? Because my whole thing was when I was younger, because the skill, the skill and shit was different. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm listening to Jay-Z. I'm listening to Nas. I'm listening to Lloyd Banks. So like my thought process was if I'm, if I can get as nice as possible, eventually somebody is going to hear me mm -hmm. and then I'm going I'm to be on because I'm that nice. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So even when I got to be around like 21, that was still my thought process. Word. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that it's not so much about being nice, especially now. It's more especially so about the today. relationships that you have and the people that you know and the connections that you form mm -hmm. in order to get you in a certain position. 
that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So that was what it was around that around that period of time with that yeah. project. And it's like a lot of people see Buffalo like then that name pops up now and they really start to associate it with music and rap. But it's like back when during that era, yeah, it we didn't we had no idea. Yeah, there was of, there was really no music scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the music scene was so. I, I don't want to say it was it was dead. Because, like, you had people like DJ Shea, rest in peace, like, who was been putting in work since For sure, above forever. Scene. Yeah. So it was just like. It, it was, wasn't something that was relevant yeah, to everybody. Yeah, super accessible in the city. to yeah. everybody of every age. I'm going to keep it real with you. Around that period of time, I would say from the time I was about 17 to, like, you know, around that period of time, since we're talking about them, if you was a Buffalo rapper, bro, you was whack. Like, you like niggas wasn't checking for like Buffalo Buffalo niggas Buffalo people were not checking for Buffalo rappers. That's just that's just a without fact. a doubt. Especially if you weren't Benny, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And it was really only Benny. Yeah, he's putting out the mixtapes. Them you know Benny, what I'm saying. <laughs> those Benny versus Shout out Wayne to Benny. If you wasn't Benny, then you you was whack. But the thing was, in in my like age group, like for whatever reason, everybody knew who we were. Like, me mm-hmm. and my homies, you know what I'm saying? With mm-hmm. the whole Ocho thing. And then even before that, we we all went to City Honors, but we was cool niggas from City Honors. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people naturally gravitated towards us. Damn, we got a City Honors motherfucker on the pod, man. That's yeah. a big fact. That's we, went to, we went to Tech. Oh, word? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fifth through 12th, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, continue. You know, when, when I finally came with that first mixtape, and this was when Twitter first started booming. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Twitter, motherfuckers jumping on Twitter, oh. <laughs> hashtag, and it was still trending topics and the shit like that. The this was the days beginning. Of this was the, the real beginning Twitter. Of Twitter. When, it wasn't when so I finally sensitive. came with that first mixtape, yo, around that period of time, if if there was a subject or or a hashtag or something like that that was like trending, you would get an email, mm. and it would, you know what I'm saying? It would tell you like, hey, this is trending in in this part of Western Europe, whatever that, whatever like that. That first day when WAC came out. I got one of those emails. Like, my shit was trending Come in on. Western New York. You That's feel what I'm wild. saying? So, I'm not going to say that I, I put, because it's far from that. Like, there was Cooley High. There was fucking uh, Well-Fed. Shout out to Well-Fed. Uh, Loyalty. Like, Rain mm-hmm. was doing his thing around that time. It was plenty of people doing their thing around that time. Right. But my mixtape, like, that first mixtape, whack, it was definitely one of the one of the eye-opening moments for, like, at least my my age group of Buffalo hip hop, where people mm-hmm. was like, okay, like I can actually listen to this, and this nigga is from Buffalo. You right. know what I'm saying? Because it's not trash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the ironic thing was, I called it whack. Exa- yeah, exactly. So that's what really made people gravitate towards like, why you call it whack? Like, is yeah. this shit? So did whack? you do that purposely? Did yeah, you know I did. that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the and then the uh, the abri- not abbreviation, but uh, you know, acronym. acronym. Yeah, the acronym. Yeah. yeah. It basically it just drew people in. It's like, well, what 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 is this shit about? You know what I'm saying? What, what what is this shit about? That was really what people were asking me, and that was like the question. Like, okay, is it whack? Is mm-hmm. it women all cap? Like, what is, what's going on? This is on like that piff. And so that I think I put it on that piff. It was on. Um, this was when you could still just like upload to like. Um, it was like math file sharing, different uh, different like websites. And shit. Yeah, LineWire like, and shit like that. Line-wire. You could upload it to that. And I, we were putting out links like that. Like, it would go on, like, okay. LineWire. And we definitely did that Piff. And it's actually still on that Piff. Yeah. The reason I asked is because I, I remember, like, back then when that Piff was coming up. Yeah. If you got 20,000, 30,000 downloads, yeah. or listens, you was popping. Yeah. <laughs> and I, <laughs> like, I was about to say, and I remember, I think I had to pay for it, but it was on the um the front page of that pit for like maybe two days or something that's, like that. That's fire. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of people like tuned into it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a big deal even just for two days on that yeah. pit. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I, I think it was like hundred fifty dollars or something like that. And people, you know, they was going to the page and they mm-hmm. was downloading it, listening to it. But yeah, and then like from there it was just like shit. It was funny because when that joint came out, I had um a lot of people giving me a lot of praise. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, this shit is dope. But then there was some people from the town Mm-hmm. That for whatever reason just felt like this shit wasn't it, mm. you know what I'm saying? It was just like yo, like nah, like How, like did that put a fire under you? It did, it did. Did you have you ever listened to Negative Nothing? I have, but I can't quote. So Negative Nothing was on some like, and that was the second mixtape. Mm-hmm. That shit was just on some. All right, I'm about to get all these fucking '90s beats, and I'm about to just really show y'all that I can really <laughs> rap. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it was just. Like I still to this day feel like that was my best work, word hands down. Wow, 
That's yeah, I died. Yeah, I died into it when I when yeah. I was going through your discography. Yeah, yeah that nigga did nothing. Like that. That's that shit is different. <laughs> that shit that's different. But it was because you know, like I said, I have been putting in all this work for all these years. I'm 14, trying to. I got notebooks, notebooks, notebooks. I'm mm-hmm. writing. I'm writing. I'm in the studio. So you, you was really saying? like taking it serious at this time. I like, was taking this it. is like I want to make my lifelong career out of this music right I was here. taking it so serious, bro. And like I said, the reason why is because I passed when I was, I was, I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So when my dad passed away, before he passed away, I should say, you know what I'm saying? I saw my dad on his deathbed. So, you know, one of the last things that he said was, always make sure you take care of your mom and your sister. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't know what was about to happen to him. He had pneumonia. Mm-hmm. He was going through a lot of different things. He wasn't even here. We was, uh, we was all the way out in Connecticut. Okay. So, you know, my grandmother took me out there. We pulled up. And, uh, you know, my dad, what's funny is my dad didn't even want me listening to rap. He, my parents was like that, too. Well, word. Why is word. that? Uh, he thought it was, he just thought it was too, it was too hard. It was too, like, you know, it, was, it wasn't going to be the right influence for me. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't really know what type of life he saw me living or what he envisioned for me, but he didn't want me listening to rap. Or at least not, like, real hardcore gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? My dad, he just wasn't with it. So what type of music was he into then? To be honest, it was like more so just like a lot of R and B. You know what I'm saying? Like we had we had a few uh, CDs in the crib. Like I remember my first couple experiences with hip hop was like Public Enemy. Um, definitely, uh, what was it? Uh, Criminal Minded, Criminal Minded Joint, um, Tupac. One of my first experiences. I think All Eyes on Me we had in the crib. Um, which was which is is funny because it was like that was that was kind of like considered gangster shit, but mm-hmm. you know he didn't he didn't want that for me. But I took a real liking to it. You know what I mean? I took a real 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 deep liking to like hip hop at a young age too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, you know, and again, that that's what gave me that drive though. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like, yo, this is what I want to do. I I love this shit. You know what I mean? And so, being that I was you know a young kid, obviously I couldn't get. You know, fucking, I couldn't get a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. you know, I'm seeing Bow Wow on the TV screen. I'm yep, seeing, I'm seeing these different, different. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing that was these. My first CD, Bow Wow, Word be Dog. Yep. Come on, that yeah. first, that first single that came out was crazy. That what was it? Bounce, Bounce with me? me? Yeah, yeah. yeah Bounce Hold with on, me. Bounce with me is the first one. I think Bounce with me was the first song. I thought the first one was um the joint that had Snoop Dogg in the video. Mm. Was it yeah. I think it was Bounce called? With Me, bro. It might have been. That might have been the, the first one I saw been. was the one where he was like in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember that joint too. Um, my mom, she refused to like let us even watch music videos. Because it's like, it, she don't want that image for you to desire that because it's not real. It's just, right, she's lower, right, that's not real. Right. Right. That's, that's a fact though. Yeah, and it's like, I, looking back as a kid, I, of course I sneak and watch them anyway. Mm-hmm. But it was like, I, I'm thankful that she did that, especially in today's era when you see the Instagrams of how you can easily get caught up. In oh this yeah, for sure. Curated. That's actually interesting because it was it was almost like that was like the Instagram kind of you know what I'm saying back exactly. then. Exactly. You know that's that's interesting. Exactly. Because they put so much money and energy into creating that image. Mm-hmm. It's like we forget how powerful this social media and all of that can be as far as influence goes. Because people used to literally invest millions. People still do it with movies. Yeah. So it's like that goes hand in hand with the the art and music or whatever message you're trying to push. Right. Like you spoke on like Buster Rhymes being like your favorite. Mm-hmm. His visuals were insane. insane. Still some of the best videos insane. of all time. Still fact. this day. <laughs> yeah. That era just period. Him, Missy. Mm-hmm. And it's like what's dope about that is like it's funny because you mentioned like you said your influencers like Banks and Bus. I can see it. Like now that you say it, I can mm-hmm. see it. Yeah, for a fact. Yeah, and for it's like I, I see. I see how your your art is evolving, mm-hmm. and just like was. Were you always in the fashion? Were you in the fashion back then too? You know what? Shout out to Esco. Esco is in the fashion. Mm-hmm. I'm more so just a nigga that like I like to get. I like to get right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But I'm not gonna say I'm in the fashion. If you ask me all the different names of like different designers and shit, I can't tell you none of that shit. Mm-hmm. Biz can tell you that shit. That's facts. <laughs> me, I just always, I always like to get fly. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, but not on some flashy type shit. I just like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just trying to come correct. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, just putting together the fit. Yeah, put the fit together. You know what I'm saying? If I got on a little label, sometimes I don't write. I don't like wearing labels. Sometimes I do. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? As long as the shit just look good. 
Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. but in terms of if you want to like if you want to go there to like where the fashion you know I I want to I want to slowly okay work okay because yeah, 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 yeah. I got I actually want to stay on whack for a little bit well in that realm okay yeah so sure. what was your if you could compare your mindset to when you were making whack and when that project released to your most recent joint Asphalt Calligraphy where would you say <sighs> that's crazy like bro. just to compare that's those a, two that's a crazy question because around that time. Um, I was just, like I said, women, alcohol, cash, and kicks. It was, I was working, you know what I mean? I was working a job. I was um, just partying pretty much every day. I was drinking. I was smoking. You know what I'm saying? I was just living life. Like, I was 21 years mm-hmm. old. You know what I'm saying? Young boy. Yeah, it was just like, I was, like, my main focus around that time was just women. Uh, I was getting fly. And... Shout out to my boy Flop. He used to keep me in all the illest retros, like shit that <laughs> niggas couldn't get. You know what I'm saying? Because his brother, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, shout out to Juice. His brother used to cop three pairs of everything. You feel what I'm saying? They yeah. had a whole crib that had nothing but retros, phone posits, so all, the, all the ones and out shit. That's Wee's cousin. So yeah. shit, I used to pull up over there. Shout out to the boys. Shit, yeah, word. Yo, what you got for me? What you got for me, cuz? <laughs> and I'm, I'm copping shit that niggas haven't seen. I'm working at the sneaker store. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and niggas is coming in. I got on fucking French blue twelves from six years ago. They like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, how you got these shits on? You looking like that boy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was like my my main thing around it was just yo, niggas can't rap with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm better. I'm better than everybody, and that's just that's just the facts. That was like my main message. I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. I'm getting flyer than you. I'm getting girls, and shit, I'm about this money. Women, alcohol, guys, <laughs> and kids, you feel me? That's and then fact. compared to now, you know what I'm saying, where I'm 31 years old and, you know, uh, asphalt calligraphy, the mindset, um, I think, with making that was, man, it's still the same. It's still pretty much the same in terms of, you know, I'm evolving as an artist and I'm still doper than you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm still I'm still coming with, coming with crazy lines. And I think now it's just, you know, me being a father, I don't mm-hmm. drink anymore. I don't smoke anymore. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? I saw like you on, uh, uh, you was toasting this like one year so. Okay. Yeah, one year. It'll be one year. Um, December eighth. Okay. Dope. December eighth. It'll be one full year. That's, um, that's dope. So I've been able to just think more clearly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I don't work a job anymore. Like this. Mm-hmm. This is my job. Word. You know what I'm saying? Like between that's a this blessing and, for sure. And art for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Um, this is my job now. This is and it's always been my purpose. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like I just. You know, it's funny, I, I quit my job earlier this year, and, you know, just to even be in a position to do that, I had to do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It wasn't, like, some shit that I wanted to do. I kind of had to. Mm-hmm. But then to be able to evolve into where I am now has just been a crazy blessing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. Um, you know, but with the whole asphalt calligraphy thing, like, it, it's just, like, my mindset now is just, like, yo, it's, it's go time. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been grinding for all this for all this time. I've been working for all this time to get to this point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now let me show you why I deserve to be here. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just from that time of whack to asphalt calligraphy, I want to dabble on into some stuff that's in between there. Yeah. So I found you on In Search of Symmetry mm-hmm. and the track that stood out for me was uh, the Sam 23 joint. Mm. What year was this? 2013. 2013. Mm-hmm. That song made me cry, bro. Word. So, and I'm like, that shit, like, I, I'll forever remember. Like, that was when I was like, Jay Skis to me is immortalized in Buffalo rap. Because <laughs> I'm like, I knew Sam. And that was, that song was just like, I'm glad somebody was able to encapsulate that. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. And it's it's really ill because um you know Sam was a close friend to me as well, and you know when everything popped off because you know her birthday is two days before mine, mm. so uh, I remember when I got that phone call and um you know people people was telling me what happened and I'm just like yo like how could it could y'all be at a house party and you know it's maybe a hundred people out there and nobody seen nothing. Like nobody did nothing. Nobody called nobody. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and what's so ill about it is Sam was just like, you know, you know, Sam, 
she was always smiling. She Yo, was always energetic. One of the sweetest women I've ever met. Yo, it's in just my like it life. didn't make sense. So it was that shit fucked me up, bro. Yeah, because it was like she was celebrating her uh, graduation. Just we graduated. touched on this in the Gino interview, right? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, cause yeah, cause I met I met Sam through my brother. Right, I, I'm I was a little brother, so she always showed show love and she passed away on uh at the party like celebrating her graduation mm -hmm. like some random dude i don't know just shooting out uh, you don't know <laughs> yeah it, like, it just it still don't make sense it's still like it's, i wasn't there you know yeah, what i mean and but it just it, it didn't make sense and so you know, I was I was thinking about it, and that was something that really like really affected me around that time. You know, like you said, you know, it just it, it affected me in a lot of ways, and I basically, you know, you heard the verse, my verse on it. It's like the verse is written to mm -hmm. the dude who did it. Like, mm -hmm. yo, think about what the fuck you did. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, how could you do that? Think about mm -hmm. think about her mom. Think about sisters. You know, think about your your family, process yeah. of you know probably getting drunk or getting high and then pulling up and then shooting in a crowd of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How does that make sense? Yeah, and it's we see it, we Some see it. It's, it's not, and what what hurts me about it is like it's not, that's not a foreign thing even today. Oh yeah, it's still not a foreign thing today. We see people losing their lives over a lot of nonsense, 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 yo. And that's, you know, what's so what's so crazy is being from Buffalo, and then you know, being that we have this voice now. Mm -hmm. You know that in in Buffalo hip hop, and we can tell people what it is to be from Buffalo. You know, to us, we're from we're from the city, we're mm -hmm. from the town. So yeah. it's like, you know, this shit is like everyday shit. Yeah, it's regular. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's everyday. This shit is regular, but like to the world, it's like, yo, what? That's a tragedy. That's like, a national what tragedy, bro. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's fucked up. It's fucked up. And what's even more fucked up is I can I can name you another instance where someone else in Buffalo was celebrating their graduation night and got murdered. Dude on Broadway Joe's. The, the nah, it was dude. a little bit further up on Main, but yeah. Um mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put his name out there, but somebody I know actually actually killed a dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's, that's, it's it's, yeah, it's that's, crazy to even fathom yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? With Buffalo being so small, you can't not feel the ripple effects of people make doing these type of things right it's like you either gonna know somebody who got that shot you're gonna know the shooter or, or you somebody, know who, somebody you're who you're close to was affected by yeah, that. yeah or somebody the degree of separation is so small mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but it's just it's ill to really think about you know that we're it's almost like we're not accustomed to it but it's just like yo this is just part of life in buffalo mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that was why i really had to make the song and just you know in hopes that eventually you know that person would, would hear that song and just you know have some degree of uh i don't know if it's it wouldn't be compassion but it's just like you know yeah it's just a, a certain consciousness to yeah, it yeah just like yo be aware of what you did bro like that's yeah. that's fucked up and you know yeah and one thing that's like I'll, I'll say with that situation is like i watched you evolve from that point because that's that's when i that's when i introduced got introduced to you and i seen you slowly embody like I don't say blackness, but black consciousness. Yeah, it's like has that always been? Has that always been there from a child, or was it a specific moment where it's like, okay, I need to use my voice to speak on certain? I think, uh, you know what, it's always been there. Mm -hmm. It's always been there. Um, just with me being a black man in America, you know what I mean. Um, if you go back to negative nothing, because that was before that. Um, that was before in search of symmetry. I had a uh, I had the joint on there where I spit the poem. You know what I'm saying? The poem was about, you know, recent events and, like, shit that was going on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it was, like, some of my some of my other favorite artists, you know what I'm saying, Common, uh, Lupe Fiasco is, like, when I, when I wrote Negative Nothing, I was listening to Lupe Fiasco. He's still, yeah. to this day, to me, the illest lyricist ever. Definitely. My you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. My um, so, you know, it's always definitely been a part of, um, you know, who I am, and it's it's been, I've been able to make it more evident as I've been going along and, you know, mm -hmm. making more music and making who I am as a, as a person more transparent through my artistry. Because um, even, like, Brown Not Black, Love Your Career, I know we're going to talk mm -hmm. about it, but, like, that's, I've had that idea since I was seven years old. Like, I Word. just have never understood that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's like, like <laughs> when, you, when you were at Phila and I seen you, you was always fresh, always mm -hmm. had the clean scent, and then it's like, I saw you using uh your 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 space to give up 
to music. Like you had to, you had had a freestyle session yeah. in, in Villa, yeah. and it was like this is still around the time when things was people wasn't always welcoming to Buffalo artists. Mm-hmm. So it's like you took your everyday thing and you incorporated what you love. Yeah, I remember that too, it. and I wasn't even really tapped into the music scene mm-hmm. then, but I definitely mm-hmm. remember those. Yeah, I was just. I mean, it was always. It's always been like a. I've been striving to, you know. Just make that make that platform and make you know make a make a way. That's that's yeah, what that's, it is for real. Yeah. Like for myself, for others, because yeah. it's like yo, I know other people that have the talent. I know other people that have oh, the Buffalo. drive that I have. You know what I'm saying? Buffalo so is I'm gonna crazy do what I can do because it's a lot of people who aren't proactive. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They don't know how to be proactive, and that's okay because I don't always have the answers either. But I'm gonna try. That's the first yeah. thing. Like you got to take that first step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always make it like a, a effort to like. I know so many dope people. It's like there's no reason I should be wearing somebody else's clothes if my man's got got shirts. That's a fact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like shit, I'm wearing I'm wearing your hoodie you right now. You know what I'm saying? I got what do I got? I got on right now. I got my uh, my Bridge Studio shirt on under this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and it's so that's, that's painted a fact. forward. Yeah, that's a fact. So it's like me. I always seen it like you being fresh at Villa, and then you was like, I could do this, and like you know what I mean? Yeah. So how how did the name Brown Not Black? And this whole the art and the clothes coming. Yeah. In. So like Brown Out Black Live Your Creed is um it was an idea, like I said, that I had from the time I was about seven years old and I was like conscious enough to say, Okay, well I'm waking up every day, I'm you know, I look down at my hands every day, I'm like, I'm brown, I'm not black. So I like <laughs> why do people call me black mm-hmm. if I'm brown? I never understood it. I got older and you know, this is just me, you know, how the way I think about things. Subconsciously, when you think about certain things, because words are real, right? That's mm-hmm. what I mean. Words. You put something out into the universe, it's, it's a real thing. Um, when I think about the word white, what do y'all think about when you hear the word white? The color. The color. Or just the color white. Just uh, what it's associated with. Purity. Purity. Niceness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Good. Yeah, angelic. Mm-hmm. Clean. Clean, yep. You know what I'm saying? When you think about the word black, what do you think about? Darkness. Darkness, nothingness, empty evil. space. Evil, black, evil. black eye, black you know ball, what I'm black male. There you go. So it's like, I didn't want to be associated with what I thought of mm-hmm. when I thought of the word black. Like, it's cool. Like, I still, I consider myself a black person because that's a label that's been thrown on me mm-hmm. for 31 years. You feel what I'm saying? But, you know, when I think about me and I think about who I am in society, it's like when people see that I'm a black man or, yo, that he's black, they automatically have the stigma or like these mm-hmm. these ideas about who I am without even having yep. a conversation with me. Without even like mm-hmm. they can look at me and be like, "Oh, he's black." All right, like uh, yeah. Let me say away. Yeah, right. black dreads. There you yep. go. You already know how there you go. go. So like my my thing was, you know, as I got older, um, you know, I got to be about. I think I started this when I was twenty seven or twenty eight. Um, I was like, damn, what if I put on, just on a jacket, big as hell, brown, not black. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not brown skin, not brown. I'm I'm black, not mm-hmm. just brown, not black. How would people react to it? Mm-hmm. So I went and got a jean jacket. I went to Macy's. I got a Calvin Klein denim jacket. Got home. Didn't know anything. Like I don't. I didn't know shit about <laughs> like mm-hmm. what paint to buy. I didn't know anything about anything. I just went to like Michaels and I bought some bullshit paint. I was like, all right, I'm about to just. You know what I'm saying? And I I've always had an appreciation for art. Mm-hmm. An artist, you know what I'm saying? But me, I'm like, I can't do this shit for real. Like, I can <laughs> draw a little bit, but I'm, nah. Boom. And then um, I was having a conversation with uh, one of my best friends. His name is Jared as well. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me about this poem. It was by Langston Hughes, and it's called Live Your Creed. Mm. And he sent me the poem, and he was like, yo, I, I want you to read it, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, take something from it, because I feel like you could take something from it. So I read it. And uh, basically what he's saying in the poem is that, you know, you have to show me. You can't tell me something. You have to show me. You know what I'm saying? Actions speak louder than words. And that was something that my mom has always, always, always preached to me. Especially just, you know, as a young man, like, you have to know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not about what you say. It's about what you do. Because you got to stand on your word no matter what what it is you're saying. Got to. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. Like, I'm going to just put Livia Creed on there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, how I'm feeling, I'm going to throw it up. Boom. And that first jacket, put it on wearing it to the mall I was living in Syracuse at the time mm. put it on yeah. walking around the mall and shit uh, yo I probably the first day that I did that shit I probably had 10 people stop me come on and was like yo what like what does your jacket mean because I'm a black man with a jacket that says brown not black 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's and so, that's boom, powerful. clicked. Oh, shit, I might have something. Did you know what that was coming with when you did it? Or did that just come See, by I, surprise I when did. people were coming I up did. to you? I did. I knew, but I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I didn't know how much or just the impact that it would have. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Because I like to make people think. Even, you know, mm-hmm. that goes back to music. I want to make you think. You know what I'm saying? Everything isn't just going to be presented here. Sometimes you got to go a little bit deeper. And, you know, you might have to ask the question, yo, what does that mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I like the words. I like the colors and shit, how you did it. But, like, what does it mean? Yeah, and that's what that's what makes, like, when I always say I have to, like, I want to get to know my artists before I really, like, buy into them. And it's like, I knew Skis as a person before I knew him. And, like, your art dope? Oh, I'm already... Mm-hmm. Like it's not even a question, right? So it's like it comes with those images. Like you got the peace sign on your sh- on your hoodie, mm-hmm. and it's like people before you speak anything, it's like you coming in with the peace. Like I'm bringing something better to this unsettling. Like we see how crazy it is outside, and it's mm-hmm. just a subconscious type of thing. Like mm-hmm. Shit, I'm reading a book about know. that right now. Yeah, three magic words. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. it's about like separating the subconscious and conscious mind, speaking <clears throat> shit into existence. Yeah, all that. people That's people dope. forget how powerful that can just three words like brown brown out black. black literally and and the reason why they why those three words have so much power is because of this mm-hmm. now if it's a white person you know caucasian person let's just say or if it's an asian person or maybe a native american person or an indian person or you know whoever the conversation and the the just the overall thought about what this means is different because it's something that you're wearing mm-hmm. i've had caucasian people wear jackets and, and things like that and they're you know, they come to me afterwards. Yo, this person ran up on me. They say, yo, you, you white, though. But it's a very, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's a very general statement. It is brown, not black. So what does it mean? Yeah. So that was like my whole thing. I wanted to create conversation between people. And the reason why is, you know, why I just told you. But also, mm-hmm. when I was younger, my favorite brands, Meskeen, mm-hmm. Fat Farm, FUBU, um, Fucking Willie Esco. Mm. Um, I used to rock South Pole too, even when I was young. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Life South Street gear. Shout out to them. <laughs> used to go there all the time. Get fresh. <laughs> <laughs> right there, I was running court. Used yeah. to walk right up Bailey. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Go get fresh. <laughs> but um, you know, wearing those wearing those brands and you know wearing those different things, it was like people always wanted to know, like, yo, what is that? Or you know what I'm saying? How did like how did you where'd you go get it? Or you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What does this mean? And especially with Meskeen, because Meskeen was damn there. A lot of that stuff was hand painted, and you know some of their designs was like hand painted, or they had beads and different mm-hmm. stuff on there. So it was just real dope. And so I wanted to create something where I could kind of do the same thing and create that conversation between people and allow people to not only you know take in what I what I have on, mm-hmm. but also be a part of like you know my art. Exactly. Your experience. You know what I mean? Recently, I was at your uh, your pop up shop. Yeah. And I seen that. Uh, that art environment you talking about and just like experiencing it, it was super dope. They had uh who was in there? Monk was in there on the on the turntables. Mm-hmm. Then you had people freestyling, you had people painting on the side. Yeah. And like that's where I got this hoodie. Mm-hmm. And it's like it was Where was it at? The pop up shop? It was at B C A T. Yep. B C A T. That's right on Main Street by uh, by the uh, Delta across from the Delta Sonic. And that whole art experience was dope. You had, you had had it for two weekends. Yeah. Can you speak on how that, like, that came about and just from, you just spoke on, like, making just one shirt and it got a name to now you renting out spaces, getting sponsorships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, It was dope. Uh, shout out to Tony Boy and uh, shout out to Art Dealer. Um, Just right, our right, art collective. To where Tony Boy was pretty much the one that kind of put everything together. So, He's been doing the um, the interviews alongside with uh, with UB, um, mm-hmm. I, and you know what? I'm I can't think of what it's called. Outside, outside influence. influence. Outside influence. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, he's been doing that alongside uh, UB Arts, and so um, shout out to Bronwyn as well. That's who we've been working closely with, and you know they brought the opportunity for us to go to uh, BCAT um, to host the event there. Right. Um, you know it was an art dealer event. Um, so yeah, so just you know. The, the opportunity was brought from UB, and that's how we pretty much put it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we wanted to bring, you know, art and music and clothing, fashion, um, just all for one big experience, even yeah. through the whole coronavirus thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it was funny because we had knew about the opportunity for about a month and a half, and then we had just started, like, planning everything and getting everything together about a, a week or two in advance. Mm-hmm. 
um, because we didn't really know how it was going to look. We didn't know if it was going to be like inside, if people were going to be able yeah, to come yeah. inside or if it had to be just, you know, people, you know, waiting outside or how right. it was going to go. And it came together like beautifully. It was beautiful. Like the first weekend was was amazing. And then the second weekend, because the word had already been out about it, it was it was amazing. It was really amazing to that's see. So, that's super dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was it was it was crazy dope. Yeah, y'all plan on furthering your partnership with them, like doing other things um, after so, that? So we are doing some other stuff with UB. Um, you know, it's kind of tough right now with the whole coronavirus thing mm-hmm. and, you know, just making stuff make sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There was there was some other things that we had, like, talks about, but the biggest thing is just making everything make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. With some of the limitations that we have right now. Right. Um, but as time goes along and hopefully, you know, things start to open back up a little bit more and, you know, it's a little bit more safe for people to come through and, mm-hmm. you know, do different things. You know, we definitely want to further that partnership just because, you know, again, and this goes back to, you know, what we were talking about with, you know, rappers in the area and people not being, you know, just receiving or Which receiving are, yeah, them exactly. well. You know what I mean? It was the same way with, like, colleges. That That's what I was going to touch on. I was like, <laughs> yeah. UB did not fuck with yeah. people from Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> and again, and that's, you know, it's a big shout out to Brownwin because mm-hmm. Brownwin is the one that is like, yo, I want to, like, reach back into the community yeah. and, like, you know, see what's going on. And we were fortunate enough to, you know, be in a position where we were already working with them. So, you mm-hmm. know, for her to reach out to us, it was like, it just yeah. made sense. That's magical because, like, the fact that you, bo- y'all, you, Tony Boy, Monk, y'all kicking down that door for you be in like even local banks like y'all got M&T, yeah M&T sponsor yeah, too M&T so banks, it's like yeah. them feeling comfortable with interacting with those people from the city it's like they got the medical campus they're they're really in the city limits now so it's like mm-hmm. it's right it's only right that they we collab together and yeah. we make our environment better together it's so why do you look. think now it felt, they felt like it was a time to co- make a collab like that Again, it was like it's really just a testament to Brownman. Where like, shout Brownman, out to yeah. she yeah, shout out to Brownman. She was the one that said, "Yo, I like I'm in a position where I can make this happen. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna love. do it. That that, that was pretty that's much love. what it was. Like I'm in a position to do it. I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? And like I said, it just so happened that Tony Boy was already doing outside influence, and you know, with him interviewing all these different artists, and then you know. Mention an art dealer. Hey, I got I got this art collective. I got mm-hmm. a, I got rappers. I got producers. People who paint. Um, I do engineering. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We got we got fashion. You know what I mean? All those things together, it was like, well, you know, you might as well just yeah, come why, on. Yeah, why not? Yeah, <laughs> why like why not? not? You are you're already bringing everything that I'm looking for from the city. You know, in this one collective. To, yeah, to mm-hmm. uh, to us. So like, why not just partner up and make it happen? Who's in art dealer? Who? You um, and Tony so the, Boy. so the main people in art dealer. Uh, you got Camouflage Monk. He, that's Pretty much mm-hmm. who started Art Dealer, him, Tony Boy, uh, myself, Jay Skis, uh, Seeing Sounds, he's a part of Art Dealer, um, uh, Brett Mike Media, or just mm-hmm. Brett, he's like the camera guy, he does, he specializes in visuals, um, yeah, no, those are, that's like the main main components, there's so, some other affiliates of Art Dealer, but that's pretty much the main components of Art Dealer. Yeah, I love, I love how y'all, what y'all be doing and like putting that stamp on y'all stuff, because y'all also all still have your own thing. Right. And when y'all come together, right. y'all do right. And that's art. the big thing about <laughs> Art Dealer. Like, we're not. It's not a record label. We're not signed to Art Dealer or anything like that. We we all just bring our collective talents together mm-hmm. to you know just make something better together. Yeah, you're you know stronger I mean? together than apart. Exactly. That's a fact. That's, exactly. Yeah, that's pure. One one thing I say with I seen is like after that pop up after those pop ups. You, that's when I seen you become a busy man. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It got it got a little crazy. After yeah, that. It got a little crazy. Y- y'all doing news interviews? I'm like, yeah, okay. that was yo. Listen, that was that was crazy. Like to be on the news and then go from that to you know some of the other things that I've been involved with. It's just been yeah, it's mm-hmm. been crazy. Um, it's like a fast track. You know what I'm saying? Fast. To 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 some things that I've always been trying to do. Yeah. But you know, it's it's really it's really interesting how like, you know, because I've only been painting since. March, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So it was like using that. Wait, this March? This March, oh, like shit. everything, <laughs> yeah. like that painting right there. I actually did that one, but um, you know everything that I've been doing on canvas and stuff like that since March, and it's oh. it's only helped me propel myself. You know what I mean? And it was mm-hmm. something I always wanted to get into, but I was just a little scared to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Shit, I'm glad you did. Shit, you 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 making a name for yourself, and I, I feel like that's one thing with with hip hop. 
once our once everybody starts embracing all the elements, because I feel like graffiti was lost for a while, mm-hmm. and like that artwork that it can get lost in this digital age. Mm-hmm. So now it's like reintroducing that with all the buffaloes are using the wig because yeah, people forget hip hop isn't just music. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's like, five elements. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we see what Buffalo has done an amazing job with trying to, with not even trying, they're doing, getting keeping that art pure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, for a fact. So, with all of that going on, we see uh, everything on social media. We see people trying to get their message out, whether it's art, mm-hmm. whatever they're pushing on their social media platforms. And it can easily, you can get caught up and you can get lost in it because people see a rapper and they see, oh, I'm rapping, I got the chains, I'm doing this. And it, it's not... It's not that. Yeah. And I feel like you, you're you like an embodiment of people will say now, oh, he's blowing up. He started in 01. <laughs> right, right. Started like, a very, started very long time ago. How, do, how right. do you feel How you feel about just like in this, this social media era when it comes to the music of, I don't say like a, the, the illusion of an overnight success? Mm, how do I feel about it? Um... It's it's interesting, I think, to me because you know I'm I'm kind of in the middle of it right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, not saying that I, I'm you know I'm I'm not anywhere near where I envision myself. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it's interesting because you know every like I was saying earlier, all the cliche things that you hear, mm-hmm. you know they really they really start to <laughs> manifest. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like different people reaching out to you that you you haven't heard from in I don't know twelve. 12 years you know what i'm saying yeah. aunties that have never even wished you a happy birthday <laughs> are all of a sudden so proud of you yeah. right was like, you're proud of me yeah it was cause I took where a were you at when i graduated <laughs> high school or when i had my daughter or you know what i mean Man, he wasn't so, at the baby shower yeah he wasn't at the, at the basketball and football game yeah like where, where were you at for these things but you know it's, it's very interesting to see how people react to it and mm-hmm. social media doesn't do anything other than just you know it it, it almost like it almost like adds an exponent to everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So amplifier, make it that Yeah, much it's like, it's, 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 it's crazy because, you know, I've, all that I've done so far is just a few pictures. You know, there's obviously music that has been done, but, mm-hmm. you know, nobody has heard it yet. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people, like, they've been seeing me, like, I've, you know, I've went to the grocery store, you know, just being out with my daughter. Oh, yo, yo, oh, oh my God, you, you was just with Conway, you was just with Pat Poos, and I'm like, I'm like, yes, and now I'm at the grocery store. Right, and now I'm here trying to get some greens. You know what I'm saying? I so, too am human. Yeah, right. I'm a person just like you. It's it's interesting, man. You know what I mean? Because people they just have this perception of like who you are, or who you're supposed to be, just based on you know very very small things. And mm-hmm. I think the the fact that I can still look at it, you know, as you know, small things, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And being in these spaces with certain people. And, you know, for, for those who don't know, I mean, he had some pictures. He was taking pictures <laughs> with Pat Poos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Because some people are like, oh, if they haven't seen, yeah. you've been with Conway. We've been taking pictures with Pat I think we love the genius. Love the fucking genius. Love the genius. Is, is, <laughs> she's crazy. Shout and, out to love. And that's one thing I was going to say. Friend of the say. show. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and one thing I was going to say, I love seeing y'all get this because oh, she's yeah. been doing it just as yeah, long just as long and both of y'all can feed off each other because y'all yeah. really yeah love to rap right and the thing is super too, like, bar what's heavy. really good about her too is like yo she's just she's super passionate about it you know what i'm saying and she knows she's like me like she knows this is what this is what she's supposed to be doing. that's true i know else. this is what i'm supposed to be doing you feel mm-hmm. me so like it's it's good to be around her and then i know her too mm-hmm. that's that's the one thing that we talk about a lot because we've been out of town a lot together Yo, I know you already. Like, it's not mm-hmm. like we don't know each other. So exactly. this isn't weird. Like, we yeah. can be in the same space, and I can tell her, like, yo, nah, you should do this, or yo, you should do this, and she tells me, nah, spit it like this, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So it's it's cool to like, you know, have You're that receptive to the yeah. feedback from each other. There you go, mm-hmm. there you go. To have that, it's almost like having. It's it's weird because it's like we're not like a group or anything like that. But that's mm-hmm. what I was telling her, like when we first went out of town. I was like, yo, don't be surprised if, like, there's an opportunity that comes around where we, like, really forge something together because mm-hmm. we're both just great at what we do naturally, and this kind of came together naturally. So yeah. you just never know, you know what I mean? Because right. when me and Love were working together, we used to talk about you, like, yo, yeah. Ski's going crazy <laughs> still. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was just like, we definitely, like, the f- y'all coming together, it's not a it's not a, a foreign thing. It's not, like, yeah. it, it makes sense right. that you two get, are getting that light. Are getting that light yeah, and that shine too. Yeah, 
appreciate that. Bringing it what it is now. So, what was it like? You were just uh, you were just in uh, New York. Yeah, right? I was in New York. You yep. was in New York. You were with Love. You were with uh, in a studio with Conway. Yeah. You want to speak about any like? I how mean, that it was, was it was a it was a crazy experience. Shout out shout out to Big Bro, man, because you know what I mean I'm like I was telling you before I'm a huge 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 fan of Conway, bro. Like. Word. You shout know out to mean? Conway, shout out to drum work. Word, shout out to drum work. Um, you know, just to be in the studio with bro and like see what his recording process is and you know, to hear hear music that I know nobody else has heard yet. Mm-hmm. And like I'm already a fan of this man. And like mm-hmm. he I'm in the studio with him and he's telling me, like, yo, how did you just write that verse? Like, what was you just thinking about? Cause that shit is crazy. Yeah. Like, so to get that feedback from somebody I look up to as a as an artist and as an MC, and especially for the fact that the man is from Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And not just from Buffalo. The nigga is from the east side of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Like yep. his experiences yep. are my experiences. That's everything he rap about, that was I, his life. I feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel it. You we know what I'm saying? We seen it. Right. And it's it's ill be it's really ill because I can live in this moment and growing up, I didn't have anybody to look at. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it was it was Benny mm-hmm. and Benny wasn't on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Benny was a was a local superstar. Shout out to Benny again. Like mm-hmm. he was a local superstar. Somebody I've definitely looked up to, but in terms of, you know, watching BET, Tigger in the Basement, watching Hits on the Street, or watching MTV and shit, there wasn't nobody from Buffalo to, like, look up to and say, yeah. okay, well, how did you do it? Exactly. There was you know what I'm no saying? Moment. So, I'm just out here just rapping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh-huh. to have somebody now that, uh, you know, is can kind of guide me in the direction that I need to go in order for me to be a successful artist and to help me and to, you know what I'm saying, for him to reach back into the community and say, okay, yeah. yo, I've been seeing you do your thing for so long. It's your time. Where? Bro, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really ill. That's it's really surreal. just the illest thing ever. Yeah, it's kind of surreal, but again, it's like, I knew I was going to get here. I didn't know how, mm-hmm. but I knew I was going to get here eventually. You feel me? Yeah. It's definitely that, that predestined feeling. Like, yeah. I know, like, when I, when me and Love used to talk about it, like, we know the music is dope. Mm-hmm. We know this shit is in- amazing, but it's really about getting it, ex- getting that experience to these other people from in other cities and all that. And it's like that that's where it becomes that's that's where the learning curve comes in, because mm-hmm. we see a lot of people rap. A lot of people do it. But it's like, all right, now that you you have that now you put in your 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. Now, let's get it to everyone else. Right. And right. it's like the art helps it get that further. The social media we see now and. It's good to it's good to have your passion mm-hmm. and find it, but then it's like getting people around you that can have their passions that also align with yours. Mm. It just so enhances everything. It enhances right. everything. So right. me seeing y'all link up with Conway, it's like that's a beautiful fucking thing. Yeah, for real. It's really a beautiful and even thing. the fact you saying that Conway's like, yo, how'd you write this verse? Da da da. That means that he's still. He's still willing to learn from other people, even though he's at de- not not his peak, but he's at a very high point yeah, to where right. he's considered one of the best rappers right. in the game. To where he's reaching back and getting advice or catching game from mm-hmm. a younger cat who's coming up trying to get to the spot that he's at. Right. That's exactly. what makes that's what makes the great great. They're always learning, always yeah, gaining still, knowledge. Still sharp, still sharp and still, man. Exactly. Still still sharp and still. So yeah, again, man, it's just it's a it's very it's very humbling, but at the same time, it's very empowering. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like this moment and being in New York, that moment was like, oh, okay, like it's time for me to actually like really like this is this is what I've been, you know, preparing for like for the longest mm-hmm. time. It's ill too because he was telling us like, yo, because it was like a shot in the dark. You know what I mean? Like me and him, we had been conversing, going back and forth. I had pulled up to his crib a few times and I'm recording at his crib and, you know, um, he had, he had told us some of the plans that he had for me in love. And his assistant had hit me and love up out of nowhere. It was a random Sunday night. Like, yo, um, me and bro, we out in New York. Pull up. Like, he said, pull up if y'all can get here. If y'all can't get here, it's cool. I'm pulling up. I'm, I'm pulling getting, up. What you I'm getting there. <laughs> what? <laughs> love. Say love. Hit me. Love hit me. And I'm like, shit, we there. She hit me up in the morning and was like, yo, I don't think I can go. I said, nah, you got to go. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah. Like, what you talking about? The whole way I'm driving there because I drove my truck. I'm driving. I mean, yo, I'm telling you, this is gonna be a crazy experience. Now we thinking we gonna be for you know two days, be down in two days driving. Yo, 
I'm telling you, it's a reason why we going. We get there. The address they gave us is to the studio. Get to the stool. Da da da. Boom. He recording. We walk in. Oh yo, what's good? Da da da. He recording his shit. All right, yo, yo, y'all get y'all get in there. Go do y'all thing. What? <laughs> I ain't got shit. I ain't got like I ain't got nothing. Oh, play some beats. This nigga like he got us around ill mind. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Ill mind. Ill mind. I got a. Beats from Legend. Ill Mind and got beats from, beats from, you know what I'm saying? Mad, mad different producers. And so, you know, we go through, we recording, you know, recording music. We get to, we get to like four songs a piece and a song together. He like, yo, y'all just don't understand. Like if y'all wouldn't have came, it would have told me everything I needed to know. Mm-hmm. Like, so just us pulling up and being able to be in that moment and then mm-hmm. seizing the moment. Facts. Was like, all right. I had I had an idea that I wanted to rock with y'all, but now it's confirmed. Mm-hmm. It's confirmed. Like we here. Good initiation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's pretty much what it was. It was almost like an initiation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was. Uh, it was like like I said. It was like I, I had been preparing my whole life for this moment, and now I'm able to live in it and do what it is that I feel like I need to do. Facts. And I was just thinking when you said that he was like, "Yo, I'm in New York. Pull up if you can." If you can't, it's cool. I was like, that was a test right there to see if oh, y'all yeah. was really mm-hmm. hungry and really passionate and wanted right. to, like right. you said, yeah. seize that moment. Exactly. Yeah, and I say for any any younger younger artist, any young person who's passionate about something and you hesitant, that story in itself is a gem that you need. And it's like I Facts. I heard the same the same like t- kind of story from uh T Jizzle. Shout mm-hmm. out to DJ T Jizzle, mm-hmm. DJ. Buffalo from Buffalo, DJ for Future Drake, mm-hmm. and remember when that we was in the car chilling and he was talking about how he got his break and he was talking about when the Future uh, no DJ Esco called him and was just like, "Yo, need some extra hands at this concert tomorrow. Can you can you be around?" Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Where bet? I'll be there." Hang up the phone. The concert the concert is like at like ten p.m. It's like early in the morning. He's in Buffalo. <laughs> you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Away. Yeah, pick up the phone, call, call mom, call pop. Yo, I need to. They need me in Atlanta right now. Mm-hmm. They got the rental. Drove down to Atlanta the same day. Drove down. You sit in the car for however many hours. You drive down there, get there. Yo, help help set up something maybe for 10, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Bet yo, that's all I need. Yo, thank you. Drove drove back. Drove back to Buffalo. But they peeped that hunger though, bro. Yeah. And the initiation. Yeah. Are you willing to are you willing to pull yep. up? And that was funny. <laughs> it was funny because like talking to talking to bro, he was like, Man, there's so many people that I know that rap and there's so many people that do this and do that. And the thing is, they won't they wouldn't have gotten the car because they didn't know mm-hmm. what was gonna happen. I had I had absolutely no idea. I wrote I uh I made this piece. Um, this was like maybe my fourth piece that I made. It's called the uh, the conception of uncertainty, and it's basically a timeline of my thoughts from the time I have an idea, cause I, I like deal with anxiety and shit like that, or I did. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really so bad now, but like from the time I have an idea, then I'm thinking about all the reasons why I shouldn't go through with the idea, then I'm reminded why I should and. You know, eventually I get to this point where I go through with my idea and it's everywhere that I wanted to be, you know what I'm saying, from the beginning. And it was just like, I used to give myself so many reasons why I wouldn't want to do certain things, you know what I'm saying, because I was fearful Mm -hmm. of the unknown. I didn't know what was going to happen, you know what I mean? But when (laughs) when you just realize your purpose and you realize what it is that you, that you, you know, why you here, you know what I'm saying? Why I'm here, I'm here to inspire people. That's what you know what I'm saying? And in order for me to do that, I have to, I had to, there's certain things that you just have to do. Like, you just get a feeling like, nah, I got to do this. Yeah, I got to be there. Like, it's it's no way I can't be there. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So it was just one of those moments where like, nah, even if, even <laughs> if I'm there and I'm fucking eating chicken shawarma yeah. from the from the cart on the street with, with bro and we in the studio and he record 50 tracks and I'm just sitting mm-hmm. there. Nah, at least I'm in that room. Though. You're gonna get something from it. I'm gonna get something. Something. You know what I'm saying? And ended up recording the EP. Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come so, on. it's 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 ill. It's ill. You just gotta seize the moment. 
So it was your own individual EP or was it like a yeah, collab so, EP? Yeah, yeah, it's my own individual joint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you you spoke on something real important that like I'm I always keep in mind when I'm talking to artists and like if I'm working with artists, you talked about like um, just that inner knowing of like I may not be sure how this gonna work out. Was like that intuition. Mm-hmm. How big of a part did that like when when did you understand like how important that was? Because I think a lot of people miss their opportunities by, like like you said, me fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. But like when you trust that intuition, like how when did you yeah, know you that have that faith was for sure? That mm-hmm. was key. I think I've always had that faith, but to trust that faith, man, that didn't come. That didn't come until this year, mm. to be honest with y'all, That's because real. I was a put into a situation where I had to trust the faith because, you know, part of the reason why I never like just went all in was because I didn't know how I was going to like provide for myself. You know mm. what I mean? How was I going to eat? How was I going to pay my rent? How was I going to, you know, stay fly? How was I going to mm-hmm. do all that? I got to have a job until, you know, somebody just comes along and, and discovers me or, you know, I create an opportunity for myself, but I can't do like the one thing that, that stuck out to me. I heard this back in like January or February. Somebody said it to me. It was like, yo, and this again, cliche. Nobody has ever got rich working for somebody else. Facts. And I've heard it before, but it stuck out because I was in a space where I didn't want to work my job anymore. Like, it was just, I had been there forever. And, um, man, it was just like, now or never. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I was I was kind of forced into the into the position that I'm in now. But it's, I, I wouldn't even call it being forced. It was just that time. Yeah. Everybody's been telling me, like, yo, it's your time. And. You know what I'm saying? It's timing is everything. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So it was definitely, it was like this year, mm. like where I was just like, all right, I'm in a situation where I have to, like, it's no other option. I have to believe in myself more than I ever have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a that's really a beautiful thing. Where? And it's just like, I see that a lot of people be like, oh, damn, why this happened to me? Or, damn, I missed this opportunity. What's going on? And it's like, a lot of times that initial intuition, that little feeling, mm-hmm. Told or they do something like, damn, I wish I, I know I shouldn't have did that, and it's like, mm-hmm. that's your hint, mm-hmm. that's your hint that's of your just finding mm-hmm. your passion and following it, going full fledged with it. Yep, and it, it can trust in that can alleviate a lot of other issues because you spoke on like you had like a little bit of anxiety and mm-hmm. other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Can you speak on just like being a rapper and dealing with that in today's climate? Right? Um, like dealing with like anxiety. Yeah, just like managing it. Like, how do you make sure you curve it and not like keep yourself grounded? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a few different ways. I definitely, cause I mean, when I was younger, I took like medication for it. When I was mm-hmm. like, you know, in my early twenties, and I didn't like the way it made me feel. You know, what I mean, like rappers be rapping about <laughs> Xanax and shit. I don't <laughs> like that shit. That shit make you feel like a zombie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I found um, some different natural remedies. Um, mm-hmm. That really help, and I, I tell everybody about them. Um, but definitely, uh, what is it called? Um, magnesium. Mm. Magnesium helps a lot. Um, there are d- a few different ones that you can get, but you know that's just one of the things that I use to kind of help me cope with anxiety. And then, um, like the biggest thing, like why I would get anxious was because I was doing like again, this goes back to my job. I was doing, I was working a job that I didn't love, and I have something that I like. I, I'm passionate about and I love. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm going to this job every day and I'm not happy. I'm not, I'm working it and it's paying my bills and shit, but it's just getting me by. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So like knowing that I have potential to do more and not doing, not doing more, not working to my, my, my greatest potential is like causing me anxiety because that's now yeah, I feel like real. I'm wasting time and I, I'm not, I'm not the type of motherfucker that like to waste <laughs> time. Like I'm trying right. to get to it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's how I am. And so, you know, the way that I kind of, you know, between the natural remedies and then just, you know, now because I'm living in in my art, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I'm I'm living in in my success. I'm living in, you know, just the way that I create every day. So that definitely helped me alleviate a lot of the anxiety that I have. Um, and I think now the only anxiety or the times I get anxious is where, you know, because I feel like there's so many people who are depending on me. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I can't deliver. You know what I'm saying? I might be in a position where I just can't deliver right now. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it just, but then it it kind of pres- it kind of pushes my back up against the wall and it makes me go, you know, a little bit harder. So you know what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of how I deal with it. It's just you know just taking it up to the next level. Facts. Yeah, Jimmy Iovine got a dope quote. Like he's talk he talks about fear. Yeah. It was on a, uh, I want to say it was on one of Dr. Dre's albums, and he was talking about how fear is a is a useful tool. Mm. He was like, the question is, are you gonna let it stand in front of you or are you gonna push it behind you? And push you. Yeah, and let it push mm. you instead of he- holding you back. Mm. And it's like I see That's that. Tough. Yeah, I see that as a powerful thing. Like Fifty, even he wrote a book on the fiftieth law. Robert Greene, he wrote, he talked a lot about that. Mm. And because my brother, my brother's an artist, and I see when he had his family, I see how much more serious he had to take and how much more serious he came about his his craft. Yeah. And just being being a a rapper, a father, artist. How 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 do you how do you feel just about? Are you comfortable with like the current state of how where music is at as far as hip hop goes? embracing like all those attributes because that's one thing i love about west and like rappers like schoolboy like schoolboy q and mm-hmm. like they show off them being fathers yeah and that's one of those missing i feel like that's one of those missing pieces that we don't mm-hmm. we tend to forget yeah about. No, facts i mean i think it's like for me i think it's really dope like schoolboy q is one of my favorite artists i love west you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so their example and not saying that i follow that example because you know i'm i'm a father i love i love nas to the moon and back you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying i think she's the best thing ever you know what i mean that's my baby um so you know seeing seeing the example that they set though and then just the way that i do it as well i think i can be a great example to others but i feel like this generation of fathers has definitely stepped it up anyway mm-hmm. you know what i mean so just to kind of hmm I, I can't really say too much about it. Like, that's just... It's you know what I mean? It's, it's so it's, in you. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just who I am as a person. So it's mm-hmm. like, I, I would do it regardless. You know what I'm saying? Whether mm-hmm. I saw other people doing it or not. You know what I mean? Like, that's just that's just me. Like, I love my I love my kid. But it's definitely an aspect of um, why I, I, I have the drive that I have and why I work so hard. Because, you know, I got to provide for her. You know what so. I'm saying? I do, I do everything for, like I said, my mom. My sister, my daughter, like I do everything for them just to kind of make way for them. And I'm the baby. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. I'm the baby. I'm the youngest one. But you know what I'm saying? I always felt, yo, I gotta I just gotta provide for them. I gotta go hire for them. Like this is all for this is for them. Mm-hmm. This is what I love to do, but I do this for, for them. You feel me? Because I wanna make way for them. So yeah. what do you think what do you see that changed in you as a person and as an artist when you like had a child, bro? Man, um, you know, I always say I didn't really become a man until I had my daughter. Mm. You know what I'm and saying? what age was that? I was 27. Yeah, I was 20. Actually, I was 26 going on 27. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't become a man until I had my daughter. Word up. Because I was still, I wasn't being responsible. Um, it was a lot of points in time where I was just being just reckless. You know what I'm saying? And I always, like, I'm always smart about it. I wasn't in the streets or nothing like that because I seen too many niggas, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, fall to that. I wasn't, like, selling drugs and shit, but just, like, the way I was living, it was just like, all right, shit, I'm about to wake up today at 1230. Like, fuck it. I'm about to go out tonight. I'm going to drink my life away, and then I'm going to wake up the next like, day. Not having a plan, just living yeah, life. Just living, just living life, bro. Like, mm-hmm. not really, like, knowing I wanted to rap for real, but not really knowing how to do it, so I'm not really taking it as serious as I should have or you know, whatever the case is. But again, it's all about timing. You know what I'm saying? It's all about timing. Like, it's not, I wasn't wasting life. I was just preparing myself for where I am now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, shit, had I not been doing all that, I could have been doing all that shit today. You feel yeah. me? So, it's, it's all about timing. You said it right there. Like, uh, on your latest project, Asphalt Calligraphy, mm-hmm. your first track is called Time. Mm-hmm. And I, I heard a bar, you said, it was, you said, uh, you had a couple of joints like but the bar that's the line that stuck out. He said, "You said success is a process, so I adopt your dress." Mm-hmm. And like I had, I grew started growing my hair after yours, so I'm like, I understand the the development. Like, what did, what did growing your hair teach you? Just about trust in the process. And Man, <laughs> some <laughs> drag shit, huh? Yeah, it's a <laughs> word. Shout out to B Boy too. Shout out to your brother, man, because we word. started at the same time. Um, but man, like just being patient, bro. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. being patient because I remember I started, bro, I started from a haircut and I'm twisting my shits and around this time, this is Waka Flocka and Wale. You mm-hmm. see them with day joints in the videos, hair shaking yeah. and my shits is this long. I'm <laughs> trying to shake my shits. I'm in a club, can't shake them. But, um, you know, uh, it, it taught me a lot of patience. And the other thing, and I don't know if, it, if everybody looks at it this way, but, um, you know, like with trees, right? Mm-hmm. You can see the rings in the trees. You know what I'm saying? If you cut the tree down, there's different rings, and they represent different mm-hmm. like different points in times where the, where the tree has either grown or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? And I look at my hair that way, too. There's so much history in my mm-hmm. in my hair. That's fact. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just like, bro, the ends of these shits was once at my scalp. You feel me? And <laughs> that represents a different point in time in my life. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why it's so much power and so much wisdom and knowledge in your hair. Like, people see me and they like, it's all different types of people, too. It could be men, it could be women. Oh, yo, I love your hair. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, it stands out and, you know what I'm saying, it makes a statement because it represents more than just a hairstyle. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's knowledge, it's wisdom, it's experience, it's everything. It's mm-hmm. everything. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my hair, is, it's taught me a few different things, but definitely, like, before anything, it's taught me patience. No, Same thing with my daughter too. My daughter has taught me patience to another level. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? My daughter, she's she's a great kid, but you know, kids are kids. So you know, <laughs> you learn you learn different things. You learn a, a lot more about yourself than you do. You know what I'm saying? Like I know we we kind of move past it, but you learn a lot about yourself when you become a parent. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like what makes you tick and um, how you can be better. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? In a lot of different ways, not just you know, waking up every day and, you know, doing this and doing that. Like, how can I be a better person? Because <laughs> this little person is actually looking at me. I'm the example. Doing everything. You know I what I'm saying? Do. And she, she's a, well, she was a daddy's girl. Now she's all about her mom because she's getting to be a little girl. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's, it's the illest thing ever. You know what I'm saying? That's because she grows cool. up and, you know, he or she grows up and they just, they're just like you. Mm-hmm. They're literally just like you. Yeah. Really? That's, that's one thing I, I say. I'm like, where hip hop has gone in over these past few years, people really like showing that side and being able to embrace it, because mm-hmm. it's like coming growing up, gangster rap, all of everything mm-hmm. was like, bro, it wasn't it wasn't a place for it, and it's like now there's a place for it, yeah, and people being authentic, feeling authentic enough to and willing to share that, yeah. I mean, people can people can resonate in that too, though. You know what I mean? Like they can they can latch on to it because that's real life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it can't always be the the chains and and the and the, uh, and the foreigns and the, and the <laughs> bad bitches and the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because none of that shit is real. That's why my music doesn't reflect that. Mm-hmm. I make I make real music. I make real life music because I live a real ass life. I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not no nigga out here, no rapper out here. That's just you know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to make it seem like I'm better than you. No, right. I'm I'm from you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm from you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, I ain't rich. I don't got shit. I ain't had shit ever. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, it's time to embrace that and, yeah, and make it, it known that I'm just like you. You feel me? So when you get that type of money and get to that level to where you can attain these things, do you think that's something that you're going to incorporate a lot in your music or are you still going to stay I, I you would know, say the same this. subject matter you're talking about? Um, I was just writing a verse last night and I was talking about how this nigga kind of had me in a fucking cullen and driving and shit. <laughs> but um, you, you talk about what you see right you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i don't know if you make music at all but that's that's what it is you know what i mean you talk about what you see so i think i wouldn't shy away from it but at the same time it would always be a remind like i would always remind people of where i came from i wouldn't be making i wouldn't make a song like bling bling mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm not making a song i'm not making shit like that but if it might be a buyer here or two you know what i'm saying talking about those different things it's not to stun on anybody it's to show people that you know where I came from and where I am now, and you can get it too. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. It's 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 simple as that, and you just gotta get it the way you gotta get it. Word. Yeah, bro. Uh, man, thank you again for pulling up, bro. For like, sure. I, like I always, from afar, like seeing you, and I'm like, almost looking at because you and my brother is like brothers. Yeah. Word. So it's like I, anybody who he in love and embraces, like I always look at them as family too. So for sure. That's. That's just real, real shit. Oh, uh, man. Anything you want to get out or touch on you got coming up before we wrap this thing up? Man, I, I got a lot of things coming up. Um, I just don't want to get into them. You know what I mean? Because 
it's like I just want I just want y'all to see it. I just yeah. want y'all to see everything that's about to happen. Um, twenty twenty one is gonna be a great year. That's all I'm gonna say. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to Drumwork Music Group. Shout out to um, Drumwork. Shout out to Conway. Um, shout out to Love the Genius. Um, man, sh- shout out to shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to the to the town. Facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for, for, for just em- embracing me and always just our time, man. Motivated. Word. That's a word. Fact. Um, shout out to Griselda, shout out to Esco, Camel Monk, Art Dealer, um, Senior Sounds, everybody, man. Just shout out to everybody. Shout out to First Class. Word, First Class. The Ocho. Word, word. The whole <laughs> family, man. It's word, just, word. you know. Where can we get your music? Um, so you can definitely find me on Apple Music, like pretty much all DSPs, um, Apple Music, um, Spotify, Amazon. Um, and then you can also go to www.jskis716.bandcamp.com. That's where my whole discography is, with the exception of one mixtape, which is on my SoundCloud. Um, but you can you can cop all my like pretty much my whole discography except for that one mixtape um, on mm-hmm. on that website. It's jsky seven one six dot bandcamp dot com. Mm-hmm. Stay stay looking for them pop up shows so you can get some of this fire merch. Word b n b l y c dot com. Come on, check it right. check that out as well. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Yeah, for sure. Good to meet you, bro. Same, bro. Love you, bro. Good to see you, bro. Appreciate all the listeners, man. Like we said before, viewers, this is definitely going to be a dope comment for y'all to check out. Y'all definitely going to learn a lot. I learned a lot. I'm sure Nell did. Skis as well. No label to pop. We out. Peace. She watching me like a nigga is cable. I be on no label, but my clothes be off.